before we take the car to the track, I want to do something that has been the dream of almost any child that was into cars. Make this thing a race car. What makes a race car? A wing? Lots of go-fast parts? A body kit? No, stickers and logos. We work with an extremely talented friend of ours, Garrett, to come up with new logos and designs for the channel. I'm excited to say that we are putting these on the car as part of a race livery for this year. This feels like some childhood achievement has finally come to life. We'll need some help in this, so let's recruit an old friend of mine, Brandon. Brandon has been a great friend of mine since high school. He recently started working for a nearby vinyl shop and offered to help out about the project when he figured out what we wanted to do here. Can I wing this out, you said? Uh, yeah, so we printed this off, ran it through the cutter, which I think you got flipped out earlier, um, and that cutter essentially comes in and finally cuts out the outline. So when you weed something out, essentially, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a fine line where the machine cut. It's right here, you can't see it. I will show you. It's basically like a sticker. I mean, that's really what this is. Yeah. This is not gonna get satisfying right there. Normally, we can cut them out individually and do them, you know, one at a time. But really, the main thing is you just don't want it to stick to back down here. I think yours are, again, yours are giant. They're big, big pieces. So it's not like it's gonna pull it up. But if you have like little tiny letters and a logo or something like that, and this touches down on it, it's okay. gonna try to pull it back up. Solid piece, everything's not separated out. Yeah. My boy getting serious over here, getting the tool belt. I've got the Batman, my boy got the Batman tool pack. <laughs> the belt kit was battering.
like last night and none. A few hours ago, I got a 20 minute nap until this woke oh. me up. And when I say woke me up, scared the bejesus out of me, woke me up. He was sleeping on the job, man. He was sleeping on the job. I had to get him up. I feel like that could be, be up cooking breakfast. <laughs> That's only in the morning. Yeah. He's supposed to be up cooking breakfast or somebody and so. I want to thank my good friend Brandon for setting this deal up and for the owner of Fire Auto Wraps over in Midlothian. If you guys happen to need any kind of vinyl auto wrap done, make sure and check them out. They do wonderful work and I couldn't recommend them enough. With the fun work over, it's time to get down to business. Well, not that much business, because honestly, the car is completely fine from the first round at Carolina Motorsports Park. I do want to keep the Z in healthy running shape, so I'm changing the oil after each weekend. Let's see how the Valvoline VR1 looks. Yeah, look at that. Hopefully that comes through on camera, but that is extremely clear so which is it's great. thing about Valvoline VR1 is that it's a blue color and you can really see that here. Looks like there's really no metallic flakes to see so we're in really good shape with this oil. Okay guys, we are starting the trip off here. Always end up leaving later than I would like to. You know, this is very much a side thing for me. I still have to work uh, work my full-time job and do this on the side. So finish up a day at work, try to prep here and there where I could throughout the week. But um, yeah, just staying busy with everything, you know, it's, it's a lot. Um, doing this hobby is, it's so much in every single way that it's hard to convey unless you're actually in this sport, in this hobby. And uh, those of you that are know how much work it is. I mean, just the car work alone and then, you know, loading everything up, getting all your tools, your jacks, your jack stands, you know, crates of whatever supplies and then your own personal supplies and getting the trailer if you don't own it, uh, making sure your, your tow rig is, uh, safe and set up and ready to go it's just a lot so anyways not to say that i don't enjoy it it's um it's, to use a word i have not used yet it's a lot so anyways we're gonna go ahead and try to make like a five hour drive tonight at least because i'm leaving about 8 30 here um so we're gonna try and make some good time and then we're gonna have to make up the rest tomorrow i didn't leave nearly early enough as i would have liked to but that's okay that's just how she goes sometimes. Yeehaw! I'm dead inside. Ladies and gentlemen, Wetumka? Wetumka, Oklahoma. 1 a.m. Middle of nowhere. It's so quiet and just so, I don't know, just such a small town feeling. I'm from a pretty small town, but this is, this is tiny.
Hey guys, it's about a 2.15 a.m. or so. Just got checked into the hotel and uh, try to get about five and a half, six hours of sleep or something so we can hit the road in the morning. Let's get this bread. Let's obtain this wheat. I'll be passing through Oklahoma, Illinois, and then Indiana before reaching Michigan. Even though some of the scenery gets very redundant in the Midwest, it's always refreshing and exciting to see these new places. I've never been to some of these states, so at least there's that. It's extremely important to me that I take care of the tundra on these long trips. Considering I'll be over a thousand miles away from home, this thing is kind of my lifeline. And at 15 years old, it's definitely not new, but it does an incredible job for what it is. So I want to continue to maintain this thing and take care of it as I can. Got about five more hours in this trip. Just got in uh, Springfield, Chicago. So not too much further, but damn, where did it finish this? Ready to get off the road. Real one about the road trip. Gotta eat good. <sighs> oh, good morning, guys. We actually made it in last night, about uh, 2 a.m. or so. Um, and I'm super shocked because the uh, the gates were open. But anyways, it is um, it is real cold outside and I slept in the truck because I got here so late. But um, let's try to uh, hurry up and get everything unloaded and, um, and set up here. came a really long way to do this. Let's see what myself and this car can do.
session. We learned our lesson from last time and you need a full tank, so. Let's go ahead and cool her down and bring her in. So gripper, gripper, no grip. Uh, pretty good grip actually, I'd say. Yeah, it doesn't feel wet. Okay. It, it just feels cold, not wet though. Okay, thanks. Yeah. good deal. All right, sir. Yeah, for right sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This guy zooming out there, man. You were you were moving. No, I think I pressured some of the people to go. Off. I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, That's you mean funny. the eclipse? The eclipse happened <laughs> right in front of me. Did it really? Yeah. The eclipse no. into the tent. He locked up his front right, and then just went straight off and then spun in the oof, grass. Oof. That's not great. And then there was another car. He was seeing red, man. He like was in my rearview mirror, like he was full gunning. And I was like, does this go? I was like, man, just let, uh, yeah, I was like, y'all just go, I'm figuring this track out, I'm, I'm getting a grip of it. A little sneaky here and do some weight reduction. <laughs> totally allowed, by the way. I need this, I don't need this. Probably just shed 30 pounds. You'll see here that I lost brake pressure at 114 miles an hour. The only thing you can really do is pump the brakes and aim for the best place you can. Luckily, the pit exit was right there. Well, this is not good. I see fluid in there. These have changed the color. They're now like a burnt orange. I mean, they definitely overheated. And then we come over to this side and you can see all sorts of uh, fluid in there. And this thing is absolutely toast. It's still smoking too. This, uh, this could be a game ender. That could be a weekend ender there. If the brake lines are ruptured, there's little chance I could find replacements. I've had this issue before and I couldn't find any in the nearby vicinity. Rather than sit around or give up though, let's tear into this and try to get back out there. See how cooked these things are. That is the color that it is now. That's the color that it should be. Last track day, they were winking out of the end of the caliper like that. Interesting. So... One was in a 350C, another one was in a Z06, C6. Oh. How interesting. They were um, both with that. Yeah, you know, it's got the two, uh, two bleed valves too, so that's definitely very possible. I also tightened the connection on the back that goes into the caliper. I gave it maybe a quarter or two a half rotation, um, so it's pretty snug. Um, would you mind hopping in there and seeing the pressure? Uh, see yeah, if anything comes out or pressure, it's got pressure. Yeah. Okay. It's not giving up. It doesn't feel it weird feels at all. Fine to me. Like it feels like a car with working.
thank you, Jew, and uh, the other guy, which I didn't catch the name of, but they got in the car and um, pushed the pedal for me. Doesn't seem like there's uh, anything weird with it now. I honestly think the uh, the lines uh, where they meet the caliper with the banjo bolts, I think those were not fully just like super tightened down, really torqued down. Um, I felt one drop back there, and there's no leaks in the lines anywhere that we can tell, so I think that imme immense like pressure and heat caused uh, such a buildup that it just spewed out. It's the only thing I can think of. So I'm uh, gonna clean this up and throw in the new fluid and uh, hopefully be good to go. Now that I knew the brakes were good and the car was feeling strong, with conditions great, let's go ahead and try to set down a flyer. So that was the fastest session of the weekend, which ended up as a 149.188. Not a super competitive time, but this car is more of a balanced street build with added sound deadening and commodities and such. I also could use a lot of work as a driver, so we'll consider the fact that the car is in one piece as a win itself. Oof. Oh my god, guys. That is the end of day one. <laughs> I'm so oh. tired, dude. So, so, so beat. What a long day. It's between, uh, you know, getting up really early after no sleep and then fixing the car, making sure everything was good between runs, making sure all the filming stuff was set up. Oh, I'm just so tired, dude. But in the best way possible. I'm having an insanely good time out here. This is definitely one of the most fun grid life events I've been to, which 
is saying something because I've been to quite a few festivals. But awesome time. I'm going to go get some food and come back and risk the showers here. Apparently they are uh, STD capable <laughs> is what I'll say. But um, yeah, we'll test it out for ourselves. So we go get some food and then come back and get ready and crash. Proverbially, not literally. With day one and overall success, it was time for more driving. I may have gotten a little bit heated and a bit overzealous in day two. Taking the car out on the street afterwards though, everything felt fine. So that's a wrap on Grid Life Gingerman Rev Up Weekend. What an amazing time as usual. Beautiful scenery, great people, and a stellar time in the Z on track. Thank you all so much for watching, and please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you at Gridlife Heartland Motorsports Park in Kansas.